Okay, so what's, uh, what's happening right now? Right now we are seeing that, that uh, the first delivery of parts for the summer of the new concert hall organ and the podium wall and, and canopy uh, is arriving. So we see some things coming up through the elevator and mm. the truck is down at the street getting unloaded right now. Mm -hmm. So that's the morning activity. And we can also see that some equipment that Riga brought to establish that little workshop back uh, behind the organ room that we see mm -hmm. here now. Uh, also, so it's kind of the, the very beginning of an intensive summer phase of lots of work. Mm. So uh, this canopy is now in a yellow color. What, what's happening? Oh, the um, the iron frame that we see of the canopy is uh, original. Yeah, was there in 1935 when the building was inaugurated, and that's uh, protected and kept. So it's been there, but has had different shapes of, of um, wood framing panels and things. It was closed at the beginning and then it was opened up, I believe, already in the 1980s and then changed again mm -hmm. in the early 2000s. And mm -hmm. now we have taken all the, these parts down and uh, all the electrical installations, lights and stuff like that. So now the, uh, the canopy will get a new um, architecture, a new shape and uh, it's going to combine the uh, need to have it as open as possible for the uh, the sound to to be projected or diffused into the hall from the organ and to give sufficient reflection to the orchestra on the podium and then to give a visual sense of that it's not closed but kind of um yeah uh, more like one surface, like the walls mm. and, the, and the ceiling of the concert hall, so that it better suits the architecture of Nils Eina Eriksson. Mm. So Nils Eina, tell me about him. Uh, well, he was uh, one of the most uh, important architects, not only in Göteborg uh, in the 1930s, and he was uh, particularly interested in music and, and uh, acoustics. So uh, I've heard and read about uh, his meetings with musicians, curious about the acoustics and stuff, and, and curious to know which halls and which acoustics they preferred to play in. Mm. So, so many years he, he gathered information, impressions and, and through such contacts, and then he won a competition here, and, uh, uh, and he um, designed the space so that it would match the, um, the new ideas and findings in architecture and acoustics, particularly in France and in Paris, where he had lots of contacts. Mm. So yeah. the, 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 the surface here uh, is uh, of wood uh, okay. and uh, it's sycamore maple and then the, um, the, um, the panels are um, mounted to the walls with um, wooden frames and also they have a little bit of, of uh, um, uh, wooden pieces we could say attached on the back to um, to affect their ability to resonate mm -hmm. um, so it's like a kind of tuning you know of the wood mm -hmm. that was uh, the, the idea that they should be light and resonant but yet they should not be too I suppose, um, uh, um, too uh, easy to drive in terms of resonance and vibration. Mm. So, mm. so it's a very thoughtful mm. construction where we are extremely careful not to change any of these things. Mm -hmm. So we're going to now with the, the um, both the canopy, that's more architecture, you know, but then we're going to have new, um, uh, we call them swell shutters mm -hmm. or standing panels. Mm -hmm that when they are closed will make the whole wall uh, clean and nice looking mm. like it was from the beginning with larger panels mm. but then you can as a musician also open them and let when the organ plays of course they basically need to be open to let the sound out mm. so coming back to this tuning of the, the wood that that's a fascinating concept mm -hmm. how to tune a piece of wood mm. would you care to, to tell us about that um, well, you know, when we talk about when, when instrument builders today and, and people involved in research 
about musical instruments, talk about tuning of the wood, we see that that um, builders in the past were much more aware of um, how, um, let's say, the acoustical behavior of an instrument with all its parts, not only uh, the the soundboard, for example, of a keyboard instrument, or but even the soundboard is not just one thickness, you know, that you can see thickness variation, which is a trace of, of how you tuned uh, the most important part for the sound of a keyboard instrument, for example. But then also in keys and in other surfaces, you can see that there seem to, that there, or there is clearly an awareness of how they, how they uh, play a role in the overall um, function mm. of the instrument mm. and that's a kind of awareness which uh, is in modern times in our time I think basically lost mm. and we have to rediscover and learn from artifacts mm. and it's very interesting to see that that there was such um, um, that means Anna Eriksson was, was really striving at tuning the whole and had a sense of that that uh, that is really important how the panels are attached and how wooden pieces are mounted on the back side of them and and uh, and um, when we are going to take down the panels of the podium wall because we need to do that in the center at least uh, to um, have the mechanical connection from the fixed uh, console of the organist which is going to be down in the middle uh, um, which is going to be on um, a lift so that you can move it down so it is not even uh, seen and then you can raise it uh, it's mechanically connected and it's the first console in that we know of that has been mechanical console that has been built in such a way that you can you can uh, raise it and lower it